Good day. I'm Mike James, and this is Parkitect. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. I do appreciate each of you. Today, I've got a really great show for you. We're going to show you how to use a blueprint of a basic building to make all the buildings you see there and more. One of the great things that's come out in Parkitect recently is, of course, the blueprints, where you can make something, save it, and then plop it down anywhere in any of your parks you want as many times as you want. One of the things you probably don't want to do, though, is you don't want 10 of the same building you know, right next to each other. I mean, yes, yeah, some strip malls look that way, but in general, when you look around, even in housing developments, the houses look very similar, but they're all just a little bit different. And that's what we're going for in this main street. We want these uh, tall buildings that you can kind of cluster up together and make a nice main street. We can have a coffee shop and an ice cream shop and a little emporium with, you know, doodads to buy without having to build each of the buildings individually from scratch. That's what I'm going to show you how to do today. I think you're going to love it. It's 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 amazing how quickly you can take just a basic blueprint and make it something special. That's what we're going to do today. So hang on tight. The Parkitect lesson is coming right at you. with the uh, brick set and we're going to make a three by three building and one of the things you'll notice is I make a little uh, little indent here so that when you come into a covered area and you have the uh, the front big front windows and those side windows if you've ever been down in an old street uh, from you know a 1960s town that's what you see you see these side windows you know the big displays notice when I put the door in here with the door frame I left the door open. I put the door at a 90 degree angle. I think that looks great. Don't forget to uh, put in the uh, styles in your windows, the little wooden slats, and of course the, uh, the edging for your windows. So everything looks good. Now for the second story, we're gonna use building set two, clapboard walls, regular one unit high. Then we're gonna use building set number two's low angle roofs, the red ones, the full red roof, and then do a regular, another clapboard level for the second story, full height clapboard. Now this third story here, I started out with the full height clapboard, but then realized that's just too tall. So I deleted it, deleting a bunch of stuff I didn't want to and having to replace it, and decided to go with the half height clapboard walls for the second story. That looks good because so much of the of the that second story is covered, you know, with that roof angle going up, you're losing a lot of that second story. So I wanted to uh, to use a story and a half, and you know how much I like using those half stories for my second story. Well, this is uh, one of the one of the ways you can do it. And for the for the roof over here, first roof was the red roof. You know the roofs come in three different angles. They come in the low angle red, the forty five degree medium angle blue, and then the uh, higher than forty five degree angle. I haven't actually measured what it is. It's probably something close to fifty two for the uh, the brown. You'll notice as I as I put these roofs in here, I run into a little problem. I can't get them to match up. And you're going to see it takes me a little while to do this. What I ended up finding out is that for these 45 degree roofs, as I again delete walls I didn't mean to, the 45 degree roofs, you have to hold down Alt 8 and then hit Alt 8 again to get them to line up perfectly. The red roofs have a, a roof that has the the extra the the extra awning on hang, overhang in the front and the sides built in. The blues don't. But you notice once I hit Alt F8 twice, now they're going to match up perfectly. Another thing I found out is that with these 45 degree roofs, if the first roof is at six, the second roof is going to be at six and a half. If the first if the bottom part of the roof is at six and a half, the second one's going to be at seven. So what you can do is just raise it up to seven, and then it'll always match up perfectly. 
And I figured that out about three quarters of the way through, but that's why I'm here, so you can learn from my mistakes. Same thing here with these, uh, with the overhang here, both the soffit and the, uh, the overhang for the edges. You have to hit Alt F8. And you notice I was trying to line these up and thinking maybe if I let it overhang on both ends, but then I figured out if I lined it up perfectly, then we just have to use those little corner pieces on these roof slopes and it'll work fine. Now, this is where you're going to know. See, that was six and a half. That means this next one's going to be seven. Fits perfectly. You'd think I would remember, but invariably I sit here and I try to line it up before I get it between six and a half and seven. So just remember also if the roof piece fits on the back left, it's going to fit on the front right. It's always caddy corner. Now, the reason we're doing this is I just want to show you how to make the basic shell for this Main Street building. Of course, you can make it your own, you know, make it a little different if you want, but don't go too crazy with the details. The idea behind this is just to have the basic building shape, the, the foundation for all your creativity when you're actually building your park. Also, one little tip I, uh, I can give you is you're going to see in a minute, I'm going to color the roof, but don't color the roof when you save it in your blueprint. And you notice I don't, because that way you can see that this roof is the red roof, this roof is the blue roof, so you know what angle the roofs are at in case you have to match up or make things look right. Now for these little corner pieces, these little triangles, for the lower one, I went ahead and I used the building set to um, clapboard wall again, because that it, that looks right. If you didn't have it with the clapboard, then it would the clapboard would just stop and you'd have this little funky triangle. But at the top, if you look at buildings uh, very often, the the top angle under the roof is different than the rest of the walls. And so that's what you, you really want to do is you want to make that flat because that's the re way real buildings look and it just adds just that little hint of authenticity. Now, yeah, I did mess up uh, one of those little corner pieces. I'll fix it in a minute. But uh, this, is base, this is the base. This is what you're going to use as a base for all of your main street buildings, at least the way I'm doing it. Now you're going to notice, I'm going to add in a couple more. Yeah, you know, this is where I fixed that mistake I made. I'm going to add in a couple more that I've already made a, made a few additions to just to make them, you know, a little different. And all I'm using basically is some wall pieces and some of the roofs out of that old set from Kenny. They're the, one of the original sets from Kenny. The, uh, the building pieces, and it comes with like seven or eight different roofs, you know, a half roof, or just regular slope roof, a corner piece, a half corner piece, and just using those and some extra walls. You see on this one, I just added uh, two pieces on the third floor and a little uh, extra square wall and an extra piece in the middle on the second floor. On this green one over here, I just added three pieces of roof, and it just, it completely changes the way the building looks. Yes, they're very similar, but they're a little different. Now here's my park that I've been working on. And you notice I have a, uh, in the first one here, the yellow one, I have the big tall uh, spire. That spire is from the, uh, the brick building set again. It's just a single piece and it goes right on top of that little one by one square I put on the third floor. It makes that building look completely different than the building next to it or the building next to the other one. And that's the whole idea. Now I have added in, I've, I've colored these a little bit. You notice in the middle of these three buildings, I was playing around with uh, kind of connecting the buildings together, putting a little couple of roof pieces. I don't know if I like it or not. I think it looks okay. I'm probably going to leave it like that. Put some flowers. I've got some benches there. Just something to spruce it up. And I think it looks great. Those three buildings are amazing. And you notice I have a bunch of uh, buildings just that I just loaded up. They've still got the red and the blue roofs. Let's show you a couple things you can do in just a few minutes. Keep in mind, you're seeing this now. This is probably about three times speed, but it's real time. You know, I didn't cut out anything. I just started, you know, playing around and seeing what I could do. This first one I tried to make, a, I wanted to make a couple uh, couple little square poke outs on the, on the second story here. And I started off with the quarter length walls thinking I just want little itty bitty poke outs uh, just put a window and just give a little bit of a an architectural difference to these 
eventually you'll notice I decide that uh, it doesn't look right and I'm having trouble making any kind of roof look good on them. So I do go with the uh, regular half wall, not the full wall, the half width wall, and I make them half a width out. But then I make them, a, I overlap them about a half way, so they're about a, a wall in three quarters or so wide. I'm not sure exactly how wide they are, but uh, they're a little less than a uh, than a full wall wide. But you see, I was making this, I just didn't like it. And uh, it took me a minute. I had to actually reboot my computer there. You might have saw a little transition. Uh, my computer had a little issue with the Alt key not working. My keyboard's a little flaky. I've got one of those uh, Corsair K70 keyboards. And every once in a while, if I run Photoshop and Parkitect, they kind of fight each other over control keys. So I had to delete Photoshop. So, or I had to, un, you know, just close down Photoshop. So here's where I decided I just didn't like the way it looked. So I went to the, uh, the half length roofs and go ahead and just make it uh, a little quicker, you know, one and a half out. And look at that. That just that just looks great, doesn't it? I mean, just in a few minutes, I make this, and it just it's looking completely different from the other buildings. But it only took a minute or two to do. Now you'll notice one of the things I didn't do is I add windows here, but I'm not adding windows on any of the buildings over the first floor, that big flat part in front of the buildings. The reason is I plan on using that for signs, you know, candy, uh, emporium, ice cream, whatever the case may be. I wanted to leave a place for a sign that would look really good. And I think that does it. But also that's not really high enough to have a second story. I mean, it's a second unit high, but it really, if you put a second story up there, it would just, the building would look too cluttered. Also pay attention to the back of these buildings. There's nothing in them. The back of the buildings are empty. Your peeps aren't supposed to see the backs. The backs are just that. They're the backs. Just like in a real park, you, you see the fascia. You see all the, the fun and colorful stuff up front, but the back isn't really there. There are a lot of it's just kind of half built up. Now, we make a full building in the back because in Parkitect, you know, you can scroll around. You're not locked into your path. But it's important not to spend a lot of time doing the backs of buildings because I think it looks more realistic when the backs are kind of blank because they're not supposed to be seen. I colored this one a blue and I use accent colors. You notice in most of my buildings, I typically st stay with a, just a one color scheme, maybe a contrasting color for the windows, but I, I don't like to get too crazy with the colors because I, I want it to look a little more realistic, a little less uh, crazy cartoony. I colored the bricks blue because there's nothing wrong with painting bricks. Bricks are painted all the time. Trust me, I see it all the time, especially in uh, in Main Street settings. You know, bricks over the years get painted to match the buildings. Another thing to notice is that roofs are almost always darker than the rest of the building. Occasionally, you do get a white or a light gray roof. It's not that common. You notice my light gray roof is still a pretty medium gray, and it still looks like a darker, the darkest part of the building. So in just a few seconds, we've made that amazing looking building. Now I'm going to go ahead and take this second part here. Now this one, uh, I already put that middle section on the second floor, but I didn't want to have those little, it looks like little eyes at the top of the third floor, doesn't it? I mean, it's okay. I don't mind it, but I wanted something a little different because this is one of the basic buildings I just threw together really quick. I start out trying to just use some roof pieces and make just uh, something sticking out. In the end, it turned out that uh, I just couldn't get them to line up. They didn't look right. So I went ahead and just built a uh, couple walls up there and then covered them with a roof and it looks a lot better. I think that's an important point though, is Try. See what will work. And if it doesn't work, first of all, don't give up right away. Try for a minute or two. But if you just see it's not going to work, and in this case I could see they were just never going to match up, try something new. There's nothing wrong with experimentation. You want to make your park your own. You want to put your own name on things. You want them to look like what you like. I really like the way this ended up once I, uh, I figured out exactly what I wanted to do. One of the things that uh, I really like about these uh, making this blueprint and then just playing around with it is you can you can make so many buildings so quickly. And then while you're making these buildings, I'm just doing this all on the fly. I had none of this pre-planned. 
as you might be able to tell by the way I, I fiddle around with it and then change it and try something different. That's the great part here. This doesn't have to be something you spent hours and hours pre-planning. You just figure out what you're going to do for the first building, and as you're doing it, maybe change it a little. And then by the time you get to your second building, maybe something will pop into your head and you try something completely new. Also, don't get frustrated if things don't fit quite right. You notice it takes me quite a few tries to get these to line up perfectly. And one of the reasons is, is that I'm not, I'm, you know, I use the grid very loosely. I, I hit Alt F8 to make that grid as small as possible so I can, I can tweak things as much as I can. So don't feel bad if it doesn't go together right. Take your time. Enjoy it. The fun part about this game is just the amazing things you can do. And if you make something and it doesn't look good, just try again. Nobody has to know. Not all of you are making videos where people can see you screwing up, deleting the wrong walls constantly. You notice I'm not doing too bad with my paint jobs today, though. The uh, I haven't accidentally painted things too awful bad. Uh, this building, I'm going to go ahead and uh, leave it like a white with a red roof. I think the uh, the white with a red roof is uh, it's a classic, and I, I hadn't done it before because I didn't want to fall into the, oh, look, it's a white building with a red roof. But in the end, after you've built uh, four or five of these, hey, you need to have a white building with a red roof, don't you? Tell me what you think about these buildings. Do you think you're going to use them in your park? Do you like them? Do you like the idea of saving a blueprint of a basic building and then using that to make all kinds of different buildings? You know, when we get to the end of this video in just a second, I'm going to just pan around a couple times on these five buildings. And you're going to see how different they look, even though they all started out exactly the same. You know, I appreciate uh, all the comments I get. I appreciate you watching the video, and I, I really appreciate all of those who have chosen to subscribe. It really means a lot to me. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. I will try to answer any questions. And uh, if I don't answer your question, hey, hit me up again. Maybe I missed it. I do my best. I'm Mike James. This is Parkitect. And until next time, I hope each and every one of you has a good one.